right so let's set up the menu before we begin let me initialize or reset the settings because i have used the camera already so go to the menu number five from top and go to page number six and here i can reset the settings by initializing the camera which will bring it back to the factory settings now we will start with the language date region and time setting once that is done then we can move on to the menu settings all right in the menu we will start first with ntsc or pal selector so if you are in us select ntsc otherwise you can change it to pal then change the top dial to movie mode and the exposure setting to zero and now we can start customizing or setting the menu up for right video mode so we will start with the exposure value with 0.3 increment next is to set the white balance you can leave it to auto but in my case since i'm using s log i wanted to use a kelvin so i can do that by using the custom 2 option and setting the kelvin to 5500 which is the daylight dynamic range optimizer you can leave it off that's only good when taking photos not much for video creative style keep it to neutral and next we can head to picture profile picture profile off is good but if you're shooting movie with daylight i would recommend to use s log 2 which is under picture profile 7. within s log 2 you just have to reduce the saturations to minus 3 and also the detail to minus 7. once that is set you can go back and change the s gamma to s gamma 3 dot cine with s log 2 that works fine for me Next is to set the file format for 4K 24 frames per second. You can change it to HD 60 or HD 120 also. Also remember to set the exposure mode to manual so you can control the shutter. Next proxy recording set it on. It's optional but I leave it on. For the video set the audio record level to around 15 because the preamp is pretty good for this camera. Find a monitor, I find it not very useful with the small tiny VF, so I turned it off. Zebra display, turn it on and the zebra level, make it custom and I would say set the lower limit to 107 if you're using S-Log2 and for other cine profiles, leave it to 100. If it is S-Log3, leave it to 97. This is just for composition set the rule of third grids to on and now it's time to set the manual focus and the peaking settings so turn the peaking setting on and peaking level to high and the peaking color to red or any color that of your preference this is good when you are manually focusing not much for autofocus okay now it's time to set our custom keys so if you want to see what the default custom keys are you can go back and look at the custom key for photo and if you want to keep all those things as is for video you can do that otherwise you can customize it in my case i left all the default value except for the number six for the trash to have picture profile option in there so i'm going back to the next menu and set only the number six there so I can select the picture profile all other settings I customized in the function menu including the white balance zebra level and all other features that I typically use that is customized into the function button because the Sony a7C does not have any custom C1, C2 buttons. So all the option has to be set in the function menu for AC access. Once that is set, register your favorite setting into one of the memory mode and then you can customize or access those memory modes from the dial above. 
So I set memory one for 24 frames per second and two and three for 60 and 120 frames per second. Now it's time to change the kit lens and install the 24 to 70 G master lens. If you are taking videos outside in bright sunlight, then I recommend using a variable ND filter so you can control the light, keeping the shutter at 24 frames per second. So now it's time to remove the kit lens and put the big lens. So let's uh, go out and take some videos. After you're done with the video, you can download the s lock 2 LUT from Sony. Just search for Sony log file and you will be taken into this page where you can download the LUT. The file name that says .cube, that's the one you want to download. And once it is downloaded, it will be in your download folder for you to access. So what we are looking for here is the s lock 2 to rec 709 conversion LUT and open your editor bring the footage in make sure the footage is optimized and transcoded before you apply any LUT and after I brought in the first clip all you have to do is click on the inspector button and click on the information settings under general and you can see the general custom settings for that clip go to settings bar where you can apply the custom LUT and change the color space to Rec 709. And here I have Leaming LUT Pro, so I'm selecting S Log 2, and you can immediately see the footage change the color to the ideal situation. You can also select the Add Custom LUT option, and you can pick the folder where we downloaded S Log 2 and use that instead of the Leaming LUT. So let's do that right here. I'm going to the folder and open the cube file, which is slog2 to rec 709. And voila, that's it. So it's as simple as that. You can click on the color viz to adjust the highlight and shadows and also change the midtones according to your like and you are all set. Now let's watch the clip how it all came together. Alright, now I'm still using the s -Log 2 I'm outside, it's not bright and sunny anymore, so I don't see any reason to use the picture profile or log profile. So let's switch picture profile to off and see how that looks like. So in order to do that, let me quickly show you. Even though we don't have custom buttons, you just have to press the function and as you are recording, you can still change it. So I'm gonna change picture profile 7 and you can see I'm still recording and I'm using it right now so I set the picture profile off so it's that easy so even though there is no custom buttons on the a7c it's not that complicated you can set all your things on the function sets and you can choose from there so it's pretty easy and uh, natural colors out of this is pretty awesome so you don't have to use log file during night time or when the sun is not up all right just wanted to show that we'll go back in it's cold all right guys so i'm back inside my room so i use the sony 24 to 70 to shoot that visuals that you just saw right now i'm using the sony a7c with the picture profile off at uh, 24 frames per second, 150th of a shutter, 
f1.8 iso 100 and the lens i'm using is the sony 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens so that's what you're seeing right now and the, all the settings that i showed you earlier that's recommended by leaming lut and you can purchase that LUT for one-time fee. If you're using Sony cameras, either A7C or A7 III, I highly recommend to check that out. Otherwise, you can just use the same setting that Liming LUT recommended. And instead of using their LUT for a paid price, you can download the Sony LUT, which is free. And you just have to tweak the color a little bit. So in the sequence that I showed you earlier, I did not use Liming LUT Pro. I used the Sony LUT that is free to download and then I just had to adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows a little bit in the editor. But uh, that's how that footage looked like. If you are a Sony A7 III user, then you already know all this stuff. But if you are new to Sony menu system, it might be helpful. That's why I created this video. And you can use this option when you're shooting log uh, videos. For photography, I'm not sure if I would think any user would use A7C because of the limitation with the viewfinder. I think these days you, do, you don't even have to pay higher price because the A7 III is cheaper than A7C right now. So I think if you're looking for a photo option, you might be just going to A7 III. So Sony has marketed the A7C as a starting camera to get into full frame world. So I'm assuming most of the people might be coming to A7C have no clue about the Sony menu system. So that's why I created this video so that you get an idea where things are buried inside the comprehensive Sony menu and how to utilize it for best quality video. And with the A7C, you don't have to be afraid of using a slog 2 and a slog 3. The autofocus and the colors coming out is pretty good. And you don't have to worry about burning your highlights or losing autofocus. Because I think with the improved color science and the new technology that they put in here, it seems to be working fine. So I'm pretty happy. I'll do some more other tests and especially with the kit lens, we will explore more and see what this can do rather than using the G Master, which is what I used in this video. Um, and right now I'm using the 20 millimeter for shooting, but we will definitely give a test of this kit lens to see what this can deliver. All right, I think uh, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. All right, guys, signing off. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.